a bit of escape to the chateau tonight, I'm cooking with John. Alright, welcome back guys. Tonight I'm making a uh, dish courtesy of Escape to the Chateau star Dick Strawbridge. I like this show, Escape to the Chateau. I don't know if everyone's seen it, probably not. Not a big deal if you have or you haven't. It's a good show, it's about a couple that bought a chateau over in France and I don't know, I really like the show. Anyway, this guy does a lot of recipe. He's, he's uh, pe featured on uh, Master Chef here on uh, BBC Food. So I thought I'd make one of his dishes uh, just because I like the show. Why not? If you don't know what we do here, guys, I go online every day, find your recipe, go out to the grocery store, get the food, and make it. Never made any of these recipes before, guys. I'm not a professional chef or anything like that. But that's what we do. Find a recipe, go out there, get the food, come home, make the recipe. Well, tonight, as I said, we're doing, it is a uh, beef and chorizo stew. And this is courtesy of Dick Strawbridge, and uh, this is on BBC Food Recipes. Alright, let's get to this guys. I got my oil heating up in my pan here. So it tells us to first thing we are to do is to uh, make sure we've got our oven racks in the right spot, which I do now. The oven's heated up too. And uh, we are going to brown our beef in batch as it tells us to. So that's what we're going to start with. I got my oil heated up there. So we're going to brown this in batches on all sides. Uh, yeah, it's heated up. <laughs> Just making sure. Yeah, she says on the way. Good enough. <laughs> Kind of wondering there for a second. So we'll put half in. We just says it not to overcrowd it, so that's why it says to do the batches. So we'll throw the first half in. And we'll follow up the second half. This uh, stew also features a couple some dumplings and uh, mashed potatoes too, guys. So I think it could be a good... I'm kind of looking forward to this. As I said, I, I enjoy that show. I like watching uh, them and all their exploits they have on the uh, at the Chateau in France. And... I don't know, I figured I can't go there, so I might as well make something is here, so why not? So we're going to brown that, that beef up along with the rest of that, guys, and we will be back in one moment when that beef is ready to go. Alright guys, our beef is browned up, so it tells us to remove it with a slotted spoon, so that's what we're going to do, and uh, put her on a side on a plate for later. Well, not too much later, but a little bit later. So we'll get the beef out of there. And then, it says to add our chorizo and our onions to the pan. So, get our beef out. There's the beef. Beautiful. Look at that. Beefy. So we're going to add our chorizo sausage. That's just a couple lengths of chorizo, about 225 grams. And uh, it's called for a large diced onion, so into the pan. Here we're going to stir around. We're going to cook that until the chorizo, start, chorizo starts running its fat, starts running the chorizo and the uh, onions become translucent, I believe it says. Uh, add the chorizo and onion to the pan, fry until softened, and the fat runs from the chorizo. So until they're soft and the fat runs from the chorizo. So that's what we'll do. we got them in there, cooking away nicely. Alright, we'll keep them on the go. And guys, if you like what you see, make sure you're throwing those thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button over there, guys. Also, anything you want to see me cook, just throw in the comments. Love hearing from you. I'd love to hear from you. If there's any other shows, you, the show that you might be interested in, and hey, they do a lot of cooking on there, just let me know. I'm kind of interested in checking out with me. So, we'll get this cooking away here. Just that she's coming along nicely. So the next step is that shouldn't take too long, I don't think. Uh, next one, out of the carrots and the parsnip, parsnips, and continue to cook until... Tinged with color and beginning to soften. Okay. Sprinkle in the flour and cook for two to three minutes, stirring frequently. Pour over the wine and stirring consistently, bring to a boil. Then stir in the beef stock. And then we're returning the beef and okay, it's easy to salt it Sounds good? I think I can do that. So we're gonna let this cook for a few more minutes. And then we're gonna do those next steps. And we'll be right back when that tree is ready to go, guys. Alright guys, it looks like our sausage is uh, running its fat there and the onions look soft. So now we're going to add our parsnip. Call for a couple large parsnips. Didn't really find large ones, so I put three medium ones in. And some carrot. A couple carrots. 
There it all. It says to cut the carrots and the parsley about the same size as the peas. So we're going to throw those in, give them a stir around, and we're going to let them cook for a few minutes. Let's just make sure we've got everything going on right here because I've been known to miss steps. I had the carrots and the parsnip and continued to cook until tinged with color and began to solve. Perfect. All right. We will let them cook for a few minutes and we'll be right back when we're going to add that flour and everything else, guys. All right, guys, your carrots and parsnips are about ready. So it says that our flour now and stir and cook it for another couple of minutes. So that's what we're going to do. Another two to three minutes stirring and cooking. Then we're going to add our red wine and our beef stock. So we'll just give that a good stir up. Yeah, as I said, guys, I really do enjoy this show. That's why I thought I'd make this uh, make this video in honor of them. But and it's a recipe that you know I ordinarily wouldn't make a beef and chorizo stew. So why not? I think it sounds quite good. Give it a whirl. Made lots of different dishes on this so far, guys. As well, if uh, you've been watching any of these, like we had. Russian last night, we made Czech dishes, we've done all sorts of stuff, goulash we did, we did stroganoff last night from Russia. The international dishes are really good, I do enjoy those, but I'm looking forward to this one. I uh, do like beef stew, so I am definitely looking forward to giving this one a try. So, we got it mixed up pretty good, it's been cooking not bad. So now I believe it tells us to add our red wine in. Ah, where are we? Yeah, pour over the red wine, stirring continuously, bring to a boil, and stir the beef stock. So, we've got a red wine. We're going to pour in. It tells us to keep stirring. Red wine in the pot. Give her a stir. And get her up to a boil here. And then we're going to add our beef stock in. Yeah, I do think this is definitely going to be a nice dish. I like chorizo sausage. I've never really cooked with it before, this uh, little journey. This is day 51, by the way, of our uh, journey, guys. And our 365-day cooking journey. This is day 51, so... Kind of enjoyed it so far. All sorts of different things. We've had some, you know, really good recipes. We've had a few not-so-great recipes, but... I think this one's going to be a good one. I think Dick knows what he's doing here, so... At least I hope he does. We'll find out. So, now we're going to add our beef stock in there. It says slowly add our beef stock. So, that's what we're going to do, slowly add the beef stock. And keep stirring it around. Alright. Some stirs here. Oh, little parsnip almost jumped over the side. Alright, so we're going to let that heat up for a minute here. Beef stock. Let's just see what the next step is. I believe it's just adding the beef. Let's find out. Return or stir in the beef stock. Return to beef, the beef to the pan and season with salt and freshly ground pepper. Cover with a tightly fitting lid and braise on the bottom shelf of the oven for two hours or until the meat is tender. Check during the cook time to ensure that the meat doesn't become too dry. If it does, splashes will. All right, so we're just gonna let that heat up for one minute, and we will be right back, guys. To add that beef. Sorry about that, guys. I had to find my lid. <laughs> Didn't have it out. All right, so now we're gonna add our beef to the stew, and we're gonna season it with some salt and pepper, and we're gonna put it in the oven. At least that's that's the plan. I don't see how it can go wrong, to tell you the truth. It's a good plan. Okay, so put that aside, grab our salt, a little bit of salt here, throw it in, touch more, and a little bit of fresh ground pepper in there, and now it tells us to braise that on the bottom shelf of our oven for a couple hours and check it to see, make sure the beef's not dry. Enough. So, we give her a stir, then on the oven we'll go. at 320 on the bottom shelf for a couple hours and we will be back when we're going to make our dumplings guys. 
most of the stuff I've made so far has been, so. Yeah, that little bit of flour definitely helps on the outside. I got a dumpling on my fingers. It's how sticky they are. So we'll get seven plus the one on my fingers and we'll be fine. looking dish, eh? I think that's a good looking dish. Dick may know what he's doing. Let's find out. We'll start with the stew. Get in there. Beef is nice and tender. Oh, the stew's really nice stuff. That really is. Try some of these mashed potatoes. I really like the horseradish. Never put horseradish in mashed potatoes before, but it's really quite nice. It's a different kind of flavor, obviously, but let's try a bit of the dumpling. Let's see what you think of that. Last but not least, the dumpling. Mmm. Those are really good. Wow. <laughs> the guy does know what he's doing. Anyway. Wow, those dumplings are really nice. Good flavor. Anyway guys, if you like what you're seeing, throw those, throw those thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. And anything you want to see me cook, guys, just throw in the comments. Love to hear from you. This has been Cooking with John. Bye for now.